What is going on guys, Harry here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you do enjoy the content, please do leave the video a like. It does really mean a lot to me. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at some of the forward options that you have for this upcoming World Cup on SoRare. Now I know a load of the higher end forward options going to the World Cup are gonna be out of reach for most of us. But in this video, I'm gonna try and highlight every single forward that's going to the World Cup, barring any injuries or freak incidents. I think I've got a list of around 60 players that I've put together on so Red Data. I've made it into a watch list on so Red Data and it's public so you guys can go check it out if you want to. The link to the watch list is in the description of this video for you to go check out. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So in the intro there, I mentioned there's 60 odd players. There's actually 98, which I'm quite shocked that I didn't think I added 98 players to this list this morning, but apparently I did. Um, and like I said, obviously the most expensive players are gonna be quite out of reach for most of us. Um, but hopefully as we get further and further down the list, there can be some budget options that might pop out to us and prove to be some sort of value going forward. Of course, like I wouldn't be buying just for the World Cup. Like if I'm buying a player, yeah, it's great that he's playing in the World Cup, but I'm probably going to want to keep him, you know, after the World Cup and use that card a bit longer term. I don't really see the point in just buying purely for the World Cup. For me, the World Cup is a bit of a nice to have. If you have players for it, great. But I don't know how much specific World Cup buying I'm going to be. I think it will definitely be a more of a nice to have case rather than just specifically buying for the World Cup. So I was going to show you the tables first, just to have a quick glance over who I think might have the best chance of scoring the most goals just at a glance. Like this is just a really, really quick preview. But Group A, you know, Netherlands do stand out here for me. Ecuador and Senegal will definitely be no mugs. But I can't really see Netherlands not scoring in any of those first three games. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye on their forward options over on Sora Data. Group B, England, Iran, US and Wales. It's a tough group. Um, Iran are no mugs either. They've got some really good forward options, which we will get into. US... The same, really, Wales and England. We don't really have any English forward options on Sora, um, which doesn't really help. We have a couple for Wales. So I'm not sure I'd be targeting Group B in terms of forwards. Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Poland. I mean, Argentina is, you know, the standout name there. Poland, I went to watch them play last night versus Wales. Leon played that a few of their big hitters out. They were okay. The defense was rock solid. Um, but, you know, Leon's Leon. Obviously, he's going to score a few goals. Um, but outside of that, I know they have like Milik and... Pia Tech and stuff, I don't know if I'd be targeting those. Argentina, on the other hand, I probably would be looking into that, you know, Messi, Dybalas, which we will get into. Um, Group D, France, Australia, Denmark, Tunisia. Again, France, of course, most of their options are, you know, higher value players, Benzema, uh, Mbappe. Denmark could be dark horses in that group, I think. Denmark beat France last night 2-0, um, and they do have a few decent forward options, so we will get into that, of course. Group E, Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, Japan, it's a tough group, you know, does Spain and Germany score many against each other? Probably not. They both probably batter Costa Rica. And Japan are no mugs either. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'd be targeting um, German or Spanish forwards really. Um, you mean, you'd like to think they're both going to get out of their group. So you know, I don't think it's a bad bet. And Japan, like I said, are no mugs. They should all beat Costa Rica. Um, but by how many, I don't really know. Belgium, Canada, Morocco and Croatia. That's a really tough group. It's very, very tough to really gauge who's going to come out of that. You'd, you'd like to think Belgium and Croatia, but you just never know. Group G, Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, Cameroon. Some big teams in here. Switzerland just recently beat Spain 2-1 in the Nations League. Serbia, definitely no mugs. And Brazil are Brazil. So, um, and yeah, Cameroon, I don't really see them being that bad either at all. So, yeah, I can see the pink goals in that group, honestly. You'd hope that Brazil would qualify, but I can't really see who's going to finish second there. That'll be... Tough to predict. And then Group H, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, Korea Republic, Portugal, and then probably either Ghana or Uruguay, you'd have to imagine. I can see Portugal scoring a few goals actually in this group, to be honest. So we will be having a look at um, their forward options as well. So let's go back over to Sura Data and have a look at some of these options, right? So, you know, the main guys are there. Mbappe, Messi, Vinny Jr., Neymar. Like, you know, I wouldn't be buying Vinny Jr. just for the World Cup. If I'm buying a Vinny Jr., it's because, yeah, he has World Cup utility, but also beyond that, you know, that that would be my thinking, especially as an under-23 gallery. Um, that would be somebody that, like, you know, stands out to me. But, of course, he is a very, um, very expensive card. Gakpo looks to be playing really well recently for Holland and continuing his PSV form from last season. Um, whether he gets a move in January, I do not know, but I do think he'll be a good card for that. Uh, World Cup, Lowen, as we mentioned, Musiala, will he start every game for Germany? It'd be tough to say. 
Bergwijn could be a good shout. We said Dutch forwards. He could be in with a shout of starting. I know they have Depay, Jansen. There's a, they have a few good players um, that could play up front or even on the wing. These are just specifically forward cards that I've uh, put into this watch list. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if Bergwijn actually starts every game. Similar, you know, for Gakpo as well. It's going to be tough because there's, there's a lot of options in that Dutch squad. Uh, Lukaku, I mean, I don't know if I would gamble on Lukaku right now. And Cuckoo, does he start for France? Probably not. Tadic could be a good shout. I can definitely see Tadic involved in the goals and assists in that World Cup. Whipping him into Mitrovic's head. Skov Olsen is a really interesting one. I know he's expensive, but for what you're getting, you're getting a Danish forward that plays in the Jupiter League, who absolutely smashes it there. Plays well in the Champions League as well. He's ticking a lot of boxes for me right now. Don't get me wrong, he's a very expensive card, um, but for good reasons. Even though Denmark had France in their group, I do think he could be a really, really interesting card. Benzema, obviously Benzema, Timo Werner, I just wouldn't be touching personally. Saudi Omane for Senegal, that could be a decent card. Uh, Dembele for France, if he plays as good as he has been for Barcelona, for France in that World Cup, then there could be a, a very, very interesting card on, on people's hands there. Liao for Portugal, could be decent, provides loads of assists from that left-hand side. Vlahovic could score goals for Serbia, could be a nice little duo with Tadic there. Darwin Nunes, I mean, I wouldn't personally be touching him right now after what I'm seeing on Twitter. Um, no, but yeah, that, that wouldn't be somebody that I just don't really see the point in spending 1.6 ETH on, on a rare card where I don't really see him doing much, to be honest, for Uruguay at the World Cup. But that's just, you know, my opinion, of course. Brobby, if he makes the squad, which he should, but again, the Netherlands do have a lot of forward options. Anthony... It's going to be so tough to predict that Brazil front three. I mean, like Neymar's going to play, Vinny's going to play. So maybe it's not as hard as I thought. But that third position, like Rafinha, Anthony, a load of players can play on that right wing, I guess, would be the um, that third position. Fatty might not even make the Spain squad. I, I've put him in here just in case. He hasn't made the most recent Spain squad for this Nations League. I wouldn't be betting. I, you know, I, I'm a Fatty holder. I have his card. But I wouldn't be betting that he makes the World Cup squad at this rate unless he goes on an absolute heater. Uh, for Barca in this next month or so. Sane, you know, we know Germany have a load of forward options, but, you know, definitely somebody that's a bit of a longer term hold, um, you know, in terms of you know, playing for Bayern. I can't really see him leaving anywhere, to be honest. Latero Martinez could score a lot of goals for Argentina. This is one that um, I do like the look of. Obviously, he's 25 now, so he's not under 23 eligible. 1.2 E for a rare, 0.159 for a limited. Doesn't sound terrible. You know he's going to score goals. The boy... Just scores goals for fun. Muller for Germany again. You know, you'd like to think he starts most games. Uh, Bergwies, again, for Netherlands. They do, they just have so many options. I just wouldn't really be touching any of those Dutch players personally. Coleman, you know, if he can stay fit. Orsic for Croatia could actually be a really, really good shout. Obviously, plays for Dynamo Zagreb. Did an absolute job on Chelsea a few weeks ago. Yeah, he could be a really interesting shout. You know, he's not cheap. Don't get me wrong. But there's somebody there who you know, scores a lot of goals. Does he move um, on from Dynamo Zagreb in the near future? Possibly. I don't know enough about the situation, um, but definitely one to look out for. Noah Akafor played really well for Salzburg over the last few weeks. He's in and out of the squad though, but he does seem to get DAs for fun. Does he start for Switzerland in their full team? Probably. It's tough to say, but again, you know, a longer term hold player in that case, in, in my opinion. Taremi for Porto. I was saying that, you know, Iran do have some some good forward options and he's one of them. And we will get into the rest of them later on down the list. But yeah, Taremi scores goals for fun. You know, not cheap, but definitely, you know, less expensive than the main guys. But, you know, would you fancy Iran to get out of that group? Probably not. So, you know, again, this is why I'm saying, like, don't just buy these players for the World Cup. Look beyond that because they could easily go out in um, the group stages and then, yeah, your fun's over for the World Cup, you know, in, in terms of utility. Gnabry, Trossard, some decent players. David for Canada, they do have a bit of a group of death. But, you know, David is a player that you, know, you wouldn't really just have to keep for the World Cup. He's, you know, a young forward with bags of potential. So, yeah, definitely a player to keep an eye on. Julian Alvarez, similarly, obviously at Man City. So, you're not going to get that much, you know, club utility out of him beyond the World Cup for now. Unless Haaland gets a massive injury, um, which I don't wish upon him, of course. Um, but, yeah, you know, a great player. You know, I rate him massively. He's the reason why... There's a Boca Juniors kit behind me. Um, Depay, if he can stay fit. Again, do I touch the Dutch forwards? Probably not. Batshuayi, you know, if Lukaku's injured, he probably comes in as number two. 
Um, Felix, I don't even know. If he, is he going to make the squad? Like, I know he's injured right now, but, you know, you'd like to think he makes the squad. But you just never know. A lot of these nations have really, really strong forward lines. But yeah, you'd like to think Felix makes the squad, but I don't think he starts personally. Um, Vincent Janssen played really well for the Dutch team recently, scoring calls for Antwerp for fun. Bit of a cheaper option, only 28. Definitely scope here as somebody that, you know, will score goals domestically. But then I'm contradicting myself because he is another Dutch forward. Um, and it's, yeah, if everyone's fit, I don't know if he starts. Jesus Ferreira, I am a holder of Ferreira, so I'm going to be biased. But yeah, a great card, I think, to own. I don't really see him moving on, to be honest, from Dallas, really. I know he should, probably. Um... And, and challenge himself maybe in Europe. But I, apparently, from what I'm hearing, he doesn't really want to move. Of course, they do have a tough group, you know, with Wales um, and England and, and Iran. But yeah, beyond the World Cup, I think it's a, it's a good shout. For the World Cup, though, is he going to be the US's number nine? I'm not too sure. Jota, decent option. Ritsu Doan and Ito for Japan, if you think they're going to score a few goals in that World Cup and, and get assists, then... You know, they could be decent options. Daniel Milan again, Dutch. They have so many forward options. The Dutch. Griezmann, I don't know if I'd be touching that personally. But he always seems to play well for France, so I'm not too sure. For Ahashi, again, Japanese, you know, could score goals. Uh, there's no reason why he couldn't. Doku, don't think he's, well, he definitely doesn't start. But, you know, could he get in and around the squad? Definitely. Is he a long-term player? Yes. Uh, Ferran Torres. This is a weird one. Like, he's very, very cheap right now. And, and for good reason. Like, he isn't playing that much. But he always gets picked for Spain. So that's one reason why I think could be a decent, a decent pickup. I'm not saying now after the break that he's going to start every game for Barcelona and, and so on and so forth. But he's definitely a player in there. Um, I don't love him, to be honest, like, as a player. But to be starting for Spain and, and to be in and around that Barca team, you have to be of crazy quality right so there's definitely a player in there can he find his feet again and, and find that confidence to start scoring goals again who knows but he is at a very very nice price i think and bolo always seems to score goals Sulemana for ghana could be a nice longer term hold ben Yedder if he makes the french squad which he probably should i imagine but i don't know griezmann Giroud, benzema mbappe i don't know i actually don't know if he's going to make it um suzuki if he makes the japanese squad could be a decent shout Nicholas Gonzalez is an interesting one. This is a guy that I've known about for years, to be honest, just because of Football Index. And he was an absolute player back then, and he still is now at Florentina. I think he has like three rare cards and a couple of limiteds. But yeah, does he start for Argentina? I don't know. Very well might, don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't know if I would bet on that. Uh, Buchanan for Canada could be a good shout to go with David. Pepe has seemed to have found a bit of form at Groningen. Definitely something to look out for there. It can be, always seems to score goals. Mitoma. Morata, probably the most recognized number nine for Spain. So, you know, you'd like to think he's going to score a few goals at the World Cup. I don't love him as a player, but, you know, there's definitely scope there for him to score goals. Jovic for Serbia, maybe, but there's too many other forwards, I think. Hazard, I don't know. I just, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be betting on Hazard recently, to be completely honest. Giroud, you know, he, he definitely makes the squad, I think. Does he play a pivotal role? Probably not if Benzema... And then Mbappe is fit. Jonas Wind could be decent for Denmark. Milik. Again, Poland have a few good number nines as well. Obviously, Lewan being the standout. Haji Wright could actually be the number nine for the US. Who knows? Bruno Petrovic plays up front with Orsic for Zagreb. Again, a good player. Um, and should be in and around that Croatia team. Bamba Dieng could score goals. I wouldn't bet on it though, personally. Kramaric for Croatia, maybe. Lozano, not a bad shout for Mexico. Um, I'm sure they'll be a very fiery team as always in, in the World Cups. And yeah, I'm sure Lozano would be at the heart of um, any DAs that they get. Minamino, it's not a bad shout. I, I think he probably starts every game for Japan, if, I, if I'm being honest. And yeah, a player that I do rate, you know, but then longer term, you know, do you see him starting every game? And, and being a pivotal player for Monaco, I don't know. He scored a few goals um, off the bench and stuff, but I don't know if he's going to be a nailed on starter. In, you know, in terms of longer term utility, it's kind of the focus of this video. It's not just like, just buy these players for the World Cup, you know, look, look a bit longer term. Timothy Weah, injured right now. Does he make the World Cup squad if he's fit? Probably. Bale, watch Bale last night. I was having an argument with one of my best friends. I just, I just, I'm just not seeing it with Bale right now. Like he just looks an absolute shadow of himself. I know he's getting older. Like I get this, like, you know, it happens. It's natural, but... Yeah, like last night, I don't know. 
I, I just we were missing a load of players. Ramsey one playing, Joe Allen one playing. We we had a load of players like especially in the midfield that were you know stopping Bale from doing kind of what he normally does. But he never he didn't even have one shot all game. He had a header to be fair to hit the bar. Um, but yeah, I just don't know if I'd be gambling on Bale right now personally. From set pieces and stuff, great. I, I still think he's got a lot to offer. But from open play, I just I just don't know if he's got the legs and stuff right now. I know he's scored a few goals in the MLS and stuff, and this is you know this is coming from a Wales fan. Like I, I love Gareth Bale, but I just don't know if he's got that cutting edge. Like used to be scared. If Bale's on a team sheet, other teams were scared. Simple as over the last you know six years. Obviously, he was a Real Madrid player. He was an absolute star, right? I just feel that fear factor's gone a little bit. Um, but yeah, we'll move on. Uh, Bale rants over. And a Valencia could be a decent shout. Piatek, I don't really see him starting. This kid, Nikola Zwileski, watched him play last night. He's a forward on so rare, but he plays like left wing back. Boy, is really, really good. Like, I was really, really impressed with him. DR for Senegal, don't really see him starting personally. Andre Silva might struggle as well. Plata plays for Ecuador. I don't know if he's going to start personally. Suarez could be a decent shout. I know he's getting on a bit, but the guy scores goals. Tissaduli could be a decent shout for Tunisia. Inaki Williams, now playing for Ghana. Could be a really, really interesting shout actually for Ghana. Jahanbash for Iran. Like I mentioned with Iran, Taremi, Jahanbash, and just below him as well as Moon. They've got some really, really decent players going forward. I don't know how good their defence is, to be honest, but I know going forward, they have they have some they have some good players. So, I, you know, as a Welsh fan, I'm, I'm going to the World Cup. I'll be watching these in person. So I am interested to see how, how it all plays out. Maida, Lena Swiderski scored last night against Wales for Poland. Nice finish. Wabi Kazri for Tunisia. Ueda, if he makes the Japanese squad. Jordan Morris scores goals on his day for the US. Al Nazeri for Morocco. I don't know. Stefarovic. Kalarin for Canada. Song Min Kui for uh, South Korea. Scores goals to be fair domestically. I don't know how good he is. On the international stage, uh, Cho Young Wook similarly. Estrada. Munir. Chupamoting for Cameroon. Adam Target for Australia. Like th there's a load of players who like didn't have forwards on Sore, of course. So, you know, I probably I probably missed a few. And then Ronaldo at the bottom as well there after his nose injury midweek. I don't think buying players for for the World Cup specifically is going to really work out for many um, because their prices are just going to drop after the World Cup unless they have utility for their club, of course, right? That's what I'm getting at. So if you're going to buy a player, buy him because he's going to play in the World Cup and because he plays for his domestic club as well is kind of what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, let me know who you kind of... I've got your eye on forward wise. If you want me to do like a midfielder and defender version of these videos, let me know because they're they're going to take a lot longer, I think, because there's just more defenders and midfielders than than forwards. And like I said, this watch list is public, so you guys can go and click it. The link is in the description to go and do that and follow it. And just yeah, if it helps you, great. Um, if it doesn't, it doesn't. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave it a like. Um, and if you are new to Sora and you haven't yet signed up, there's a link in the description of this video that will get you one free limited card once you've purchased five from the new card auctions. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great game week and I shall see you guys in the next video.